What is going on guys welcome back to another video with your host as always KMAC time now before we get into today's video I want to announce I'm doing a very special giveaway for you guys of this awesome Venture Bros t-shirt I actually love this design so I thought I'd give a few away to you guys So to be entered in this giveaway all you guys have to do is A. Be subscribed to the channel B. Leave a comment down below and C. Like this video and you'll be entered for your chance to win this giveaway But let's jump right into the final episode of Easter eggs and missed jokes for season 7 of Venture bros covering episodes 8 9 and 10 a lot to get through here guys but let's jump right in starting out in episode 8 in the background here we can see hank's batman mask which we see in the background of his room we later see him wear this mask in the end credits of episode 10 also in episode 8 a massive part of this episode uh, as a based around action johnny and dr z getting his final arch of him of course action johnny is is making yet another appearance and his character is based off of of uh, johnny quest basically the entire show venture bros is based off of a spoof of johnny quest and i love how cartoon network owns the rights to both shows so they can parody it and they do a really good job of it and dr z is one of my favorite characters and i love how they poke fun at the original show from time to time gosh mister your henchmen are terrible at their job i know right they're bungalows and they will be executed Hardline. One bungle, you're out. Zero bungle tolerance. Later in the episode, Dragoon and Red Mantle mention watching another episode of Downton Abbey before they open their envelope. Now, I had never actually heard of this show, and for good reason, it was actually a European exclusive in Britain until 2011 when it was brought over on PBS, and it ran from PBS from 2011 until 2016. The two also mention another sitcom called Home Improvement. Now, this is Tim Allen's popular 1990s sitcom. They specifically talk about the character Al, who is played by the actor Richard Karn. Bing, it's the guy from Home Improvement. Not the main guy, but, but the handyman, Al. I hope it's Al. Also in this episode, we meet the bad guy from the Peril Partnership, and he's named Blind Rage. I love that. It's a very funny, punny name there. And he, But he appears to be a complete knockoff of Marvel's blind superhero character, Daredevil. Character looks like him, and, and kind of, you know, with the blindness is very similar. But I actually really enjoyed that one. Moving on to episode 9. In the very beginning when Rusty tells Billy to put the anal warmer up his butt, he tells him to push it. Push it real good. This is of course a reference to the Salt and Peppa song called Push It from the 1990s. Push it Billy. Push it real good. Dash! What is wrong with you? Later, Hank says he'd chase storms like the lady from Jurassic Park. He is referring to the actress Ariana Richard who plays the lead in the original 1993 Jurassic Park movie. One of the funniest scenes in this episode is when Hank is in the snow and he starts playing pretend football with himself. We learn a few things about him. One, that he is a huge Steelers fan. If you listen closely, he actually says that he takes a snap from Pouncey and is looking for number 84, Brown. These are both real life current Steelers and Marquise Pouncey and Antonio Brown, some of the best players in the NFL. Andrew takes the snap from Pouncey, feeds back and looks for a hole. Looking for Brown, good old number 84. Where's he at? No. Shortly after that, we get to see the highly debated character Scare Bear, and it's actually based off of a real life work of art. Created by Mark Wallinger in 2004, the piece is called Sleeper, and it depicts a person in a bear costume inside of an art gallery. Now, we've actually seen Scare Bear many times over the past few seasons, most notably in episode 8 of season 6, but it just goes to show how much their creators and writers incorporate art into scripts, which is pretty neat. Now, again, Scare Bear first appeared in episode 13 of season 4, Bright Lights, Dean City, and his identity is currently unknown, though many people have theories, but we'll get to that in another video. Later, when Billy and Rusty are analyzing the exhaust from the weather machine, Billy says it's a purple haze, and Rusty jokingly asks if the other side is The Wind Cries Mary. Both are very popular Jimi Hendrix songs. Later in the episode, Gary says that he bought the Monarch a $200 Paul Smith teal wallet, and then the Monarch makes fun of him saying it was a girl wallet, it was a lady wallet, and why he doesn't have it. But these wallets do actually exist in real life, and they do seem like they are for ladies, and they are incredibly expensive. So I thought that was funny that they kind of included this real life brand into the show. What about the one they got you for your birthday? Dude, can we talk about this later, please? That was a $200 Paul Smith wallet. It was teal. You loved it. You said you loved it. Ladies wallet. You got me a ladies wallet. What? Shortly after that, those two go on to kill the creep, and they discover his got loads of stolen guild tech, including the monarch's butter glider. 
great. Now we're gonna be hunted like animals. Dude, tell me that guy wasn't on my old butter glider. Gary and the Monarch also get sucked into playing what the creep calls the most dangerous game, which turns out to be a game of throwing a lawn dart straight up in the air and trying to dodge it called Dive Bomb. This was actually a huge deal back in the late 70s and early 80s as hundreds of children were injured, in some cases killed by lawn darts, and they were later banned in the United States in 1988. Later in the episode, we're going to look at Dean's dorm room door, and it's full of interesting Easter eggs you easily could have missed as they went by very quickly. Now, first off, you can see that Dean is a clear fan of the Capcom Resident Evil video game series. We can also see that he continues to be a massive fan of Spider-Man as he drew webs around his whiteboard around his name, and there's actually a Spider-Man action figure taped to the door. Also, finally, Jared seems to have written on the board answer me these questions three which of course is a famous line from the monty python movie who would cross the bridge of death must answer me these questions three uh, the other side he see and one last tidbit from episode nine here now right after that scene we get this really funny cut scene here with you know, Hank, Dean, and Serena, they him walking in on him, and they're having this conversation. Of they, what do you think is happening? Nothing. It's not what you think. It's not what you think. What do you think? And they keep using the word think over and over. Well, if you actually look in the background here, there's actually a thing on the wall that spells think with a periodic table. And I thought that was a perfect Simon place to put that kind of a poster. Moving on to episode 10, the entire B plot of Hank and Action Man being in a coma is based around the combination of Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back and 1968's sci fi thriller. Barbarella. There are countless references to both movies in these scenes. My personal favorite is when we see Phage and he has ATAT -AT for legs. I died laughing at that. Hank is also dressed, of course, like Lando Corizian. Action Man is dressed like a Wookiee. And then we see him captured by a Wampa. We see a Minoc creature in the scene. I also especially love when Action Man is describing the Matmos from Barbarella and how similar it is to the Force and then the Metachlorians. I absolutely loved that part. It's very funny. It's kind of cool how these things are kind of closely related. What the hell is Matmos? I've seen Barbarella maybe 30 times and I still don't know what the hell Matmos is. It's like this energy that surrounds everything like the force yeah but it's confusing and it might have other powers it's completely unnecessary to plot in the movie oh, like midichlorians this later on in the episode when dean is going over his list of reasons why his, he's a terrible brother he mentions breaking hank's bop at extreme because it was an annoying toy not only were these things real in the early 2000s, but I can confirm firsthand that Bob at Extremes were super, super annoying. He also mentions borrowing his 98 Degrees CD and makes a joke about one of them looking like a shoebox with eyes, which I thought was freaking hilarious because it's pretty spot on. Shortly after that scene, we see Sergeant Hatred trying to get past a desk worker in to see Dean, and he calls her hers Mariotti to his Sherlock, which of course is from Sherlock Holmes, as Mariotti is his arch rival. Now this entire episode is named the Safrax Protocol and is based around the guild's ancient ritual of reenacting Altheus and Safrax's first arch. Now this ritual is actually based on the real life Altheus and Safrax who were chieftains around the year 376 and fought in the Hunnish invasion of Rome. Later on Action Man mentions the boy's mother's name is Bobby St. Simone. Of course we knew this as her name to season 4 but he never actually get to see her on screen but I thought it was cool they they mentioned her name again in this episode and finally in the after credit scene we see hank walk out of a crowd of people walking around in the street and he turns and puts on a batman mask i thought it was actually hilarious well that mask is actually based off of a 1960s real life toy mask made for children and secondly that whole scene is based off of the movie dark man it's pretty much shot for shot the same and i thought that was really cool that they included that but anyway, guys, that's all I have for today. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. I hope you guys all enjoyed this series of videos breaking down the entire season. If you guys have not seen all the episodes, I've done them all now, 1 through 10. You can go and check those out. There should be a playlist of them link in the description. Uh, absolutely loved season 10 of Venture Bros. It was an amazing ride. Thank you guys so much for watching these videos. Like I said, massive fan of the series cannot wait to see what they do in the next season they've left on a kind of a cliffhanger and, and i cannot wait to see it hopefully it doesn't take as long as it did between seasons i guess like two or three years between these seasons hopefully it goes by quick and hopefully the next season is just as good as this one also remember guys if you guys want to be entered in the chance to win today's giveaway all you have to do is have to be 
subscribe to the channel, like this video, and drop a comment down below. You guys will automatically be entered to win the t-shirt, and I'll be picking a winner and announcing it on Twitter in about a week or so. But until next time, guys, remember that it's always KMAC time somewhere. Until then, guys, take it easy and peace out.